In this show, we'll lay out the basic duties of the Derrick Man. It'll get you started. It's up to you to learn the rest. The Derrick Man's job is real physical. No lightweights here. Pulling that pipe around 90 feet off the floor is no easy job. His job also requires alertness because a lot of his time is spent in the mudroom where he could be the first man to detect a kick, which if not dealt with can lead to a blowout and you know what that means. A Derrick man's boss is the driller. He's the one you need to listen to. If he asks you to wash the deck along with the roustabouts, you need to do it. He's got his reasons. The Derrick man's duties are broken down into two areas the mudroom and the monkey board. The Derrick man will spend his time in the mudroom when the rig is drilling. It's the most complex part of his job and will take the longest to learn. The other area that the Derrick man works is the monkey board. He'll work here when trips are being made. This is an exhaustive job that requires strength and quickness. We'll take a look at this area first. From the drill floor, you can hardly see the Derrick man. Most first time visitors to a rig don't even know there's someone up there. Well, there he is, and believe me, he's working hard. It's gotta be the scariest looking job on the rig. There's not much between him and the drill floor 90 feet below. The very first thing on your mind when you climb that ladder should be safety. Did you know that there's a specific way to go up and down a ladder? Oh, forgot my rope. Each hand should be put on the side rails, never on the crossbars. At sea, metal rusts, and those bars could come off in your hands. Well, she Some of our rigs have safety equipment to get you up and down the ladder. Use it correctly. Let's take a look at what the monkey board area looks like. It's pretty simple. The pipe, when stored in the rack, is kept in place by fingers and latches. The collars go in the front because they're so heavy. The Derrick man works back and forth on a ramp known as the diving board. He stands on the end to pull pipe or run pipe in the hole. Let's watch this Derrick man as he gets ready to do his job. The first thing he's going to do is put on and check his safety harness. If you fall, that's what's going to save you. You need to check for the right length. You don't want your harness to be too short or too long. Too long and you could fall off the front of the board. Too short and you won't get good leverage when you throw your rope around the pipe. After your safety harness is secure, check around the board for loose tools. A loose hammer could mean a dead buddy on the drill floor. Your hard hat should have a chin strap as well. Small tuggers, which are just simple air hoists, are used on the monkey board to help bring pipe and collars back to the fingers. Check the tuggers for proper operation. And check the wire line and chains for wear and abrasion. The fingers need to be looked at for misalignment or cracks. Every stand of pipe needs to be held securely to prevent disaster. Once you've checked the monkey board out, you're ready for the pipe. You need to make sure you've got a good system of communication with your driller. If it's on the squawk box or yelling back and forth. Get to know your drillers and how they work. You don't want that to happen. When going in or coming out of the hole, the roughnecks can make or break a good trip. It's good to have roughnecks that know how you work. 
and for you to know how they work. That's the basics of teamwork. It's the Derrick man who controls the speed and smoothness of the trip. His work can make things either good or bad for the driller, the AD, the roughnecks, and himself. Each Derrick man on every rig has his own way of doing things. But a couple of things that seem to be consistent are where to stand on the diving board and how to throw the rope. Standing too far out or too far back on the board can make for trouble when pulling pipe. You'll find your own place, but it should be right about here. Throwing the rope will be something you'll learn as well, but most guys seem to throw and catch with the same hand. After you've got your rope around the pipe and unlatch the elevators, you need to pull the pipe back to the rack. That's what takes a lot of muscle. When you rack the pipe, it'll always go in a certain order starting from the back. Collars go up in front. You'll need to use the tuggers whenever you move the collars. Never get between the collars. If one gets loose, just get out of the way. When tripping pipe, if your rope gets caught in the elevators, let go. The hardest thing for a new Derrick man to learn is when to let go and when to get out of the way during any dangerous situations. Between stands, you might get a short rest in the Derrick man's doghouse, if your rig has one. Just look how beat this guy is. It tells the story. Being a Derrick man is not an easy job. The crown and traveling block are the Derrick man's domain as well. He should grease and check them for cracks routinely. Let's review several important points before we go down to the mudroom. First off, put on safety harness, checking for wear and abrasion. Set length of your rope. Secure loose tools that you've taken with you to the monkey board. Inspect the fingers and latches. Check tuggers and ropes. These things are important. You need to do them every time you start tripping. They could save your life. They saved Max's life. I'm a mud watcher on the 701. And uh, during the process of training of the derrick, we were thrown in for the trip. Uh, the derrickman was uh, wanted a break, so I went up to relieve him just to get some practice with throwing in. And I threw in about 14 stands and everything was fine. Then I got a real short one. And as I went in, put my throwing in line round, and I had my belt on, and the elevators were coming up, and I moved out towards the end of the monkey board, and as I leant out, I lost my balance and fell over the edge of the monkey board. Uh, that's some shock to get when you fall. You forget about having your belt on, and all you think about is being 90 foot up in the air and falling. Well, when you come to your senses, it's true what they say about your life passing in front of you. It really does. I saw my wife, my kids, my mum, my dad, everybody. And well, the Derrickman passed down a, a tugger line for me to hold on to, and they got me back up the monkey board. Well, that safety line really saved my life. And every time now, you should check your safety line and your harness, make sure it's working, and operating for you, because it will save your life in the end. The second big part of a Derrick man's job is during the drilling phase. After all that pipe is out of the rack and in the hole, he needs to make his way down to the mud room. The mud is a real important part of the drilling process. It serves to cool the bit, bring the cuttings back up to the surface, and control the formation pressure. Let's look at some of the equipment that's involved in the mud flow that the Derrick man is responsible for. 
First off is the sack room, a common site for any roustabout. That's where barite and other chemicals are put into the system. Not far from there are the mud pumps, which pump the mud into the hole. Then we have cleaning equipment, like the shakers. Desander. Desilter. Degasser. And centrifuge. All this and more. Let's take a look at each one of these things in greater detail, starting with the sack room. Here the derrick man keeps tabs on how much of what chemical is on hand. There might be a dozen different kinds of chemicals around and they all must be inventoried. The derrick man, along with the mud engineer, will take charge of adding chemicals in the hopper. Usually he has a roustabout to help him here. So you should be somewhat familiar with the operation of the sack room from your roustabout in days. After the sack room, the mud travels into the pit room. This is a noisy room with all types of equipment crammed in. The first thing you notice is that you're walking over the mud. There are several pits covered by metal grates. The mud can be moved from pit to pit by pumps. The derrick man is responsible for the movement of the mud according to what's going to happen to it. Also in the mud room are the various types of equipment used to clean the mud. First in line is the shaker. It shakes off the larger cuttings. The derrick man maintains the shakers, replaces or adjusts the screens. Next is the desander and desilter. They remove still smaller cuttings from the mud. The only maintenance required on these is to replace the inner cone. The time to do this is when you can't obtain a spray discharge from your cone. Other equipment used in the mud room is the centrifuge, which takes out even smaller pieces of mud, and the degasser, which removes any kind of gas. Along with the cleaning equipment, the mudroom contains agitators which stir the mud, many small pumps, and manifolds. Usually right off the mudroom is the area where the mud pumps are. Now, they're going to take up a lot of a derrick man's time and energy. He's responsible for the fluid end of the pump, while the mechanic takes care of the power end. The derrick man's responsible for the daily lubrication and oil check, cleaning the mud box, and logging hours of the pump. He's also going to have to change out the liner, piston, valves, and rod when required. Rather than go into depth on that here, we suggest you watch some of the videotapes on it, including the four-part series on mud pump maintenance, duplex mud pump maintenance, piston and rod replacement, this program is designed to go over the procedures and duplex mud pump maintenance piston rubber replacement. So, by this point, you can see that Derrick Man's responsibility includes most fluid handling equipment that touches the mud. But there's more to the job. You probably know by now that the mud usually gives the first indication of a kick. If it's not contained, it can lead to a blowout. The derrick man must understand well-control basics. And they start with analysis of the mud. On most rigs, a sample of mud is taken every 15 minutes. It is then taken into the mud shack where it's weighed and checked for viscosity. This information is filled out in a log and reported to the driller. The derrick man also watches the pit level for any rapid changes, monitors the flow rate, 
and checks for changes in volume or size of the cuttings. Hello, um, how many stands have you pulled? Uh, you don't seem to have, uh, Any discrepancy should be reported to the driller at once. A rapid increase in the flow rate could mean a kick, which is when a fluid other than mud or gas gets into the annulus. A change in cutting size and volume could mean you're drilling into a different zone. A decrease in the flow rate could mean you're losing fluid to the formation. A derrick man needs to watch out for these signs of a kick. He's the front line of defense against them. Keep your driller informed of any changes. Generally, the derrick man has a pit watcher or mud engineer working with him who takes care of mud checks. You need to watch him and check up on his job. The pit watcher's duties are explained in the training tape titled The Pit Watcher. Watch it because it'll explain in greater detail the use of cleaning equipment, the regular checks you need to do on the mud, and signs of a kick. While we're at it, there's some reading material you need to get started on, including the Derrick Man's training package, which includes the pump book, lessons one through five of unit two, IADC, and arithmetic for rig personnel. Also, circulating systems, which is lesson eight of unit one. Read up on those, and you might surprise the Derrick man with what you know. It might get you in the mudroom, and then up on the monkey board to help out. Okay, let's review the duties of the Derrick man when he's in the mudroom. He runs the pump room, including repairs on the fluid end of the pump. He works with the mud engineer and pit watcher to check the mud properties. He knows well control basics and is always on the lookout for a kick. He's responsible for the repair and proper operation of the shakers, desander, desilter, and degasser. He's in constant communication with the driller so that he's aware of the condition of the equipment, pit levels, changes, or any other irregularities in the mud. That sure is a lot. Combined with his work in the derrick, there's a lot of responsibility in the derrick man's job. It's a big challenge, but with hard work and a good attitude, you'll be able to master it. Ask a lot of questions and keep at it. Someday you'll make derrick man. And who knows, you might just keep on going.